Welcome to Tech Insight, where we show you how to make your workspace work. In this episode, we're going to look at how Access Control Service can simplify and secure SaaS and web app delivery to your user's workspace. Let's start by taking a look at the user experience. A user is going to have multiple SaaS or web-based applications, and typically each one's going to require a unique identity and password that the user must remember. With Access Control, the user simply logs into the workspace with one identity, and they are automatically signed in to their other SaaS and web-based applications. Let's take a look at some of the enhanced security capabilities within the Access Control service. The first thing you're going to notice is the session-based watermark that's identifying the user name as well as the client IP address that they're connecting from. We also need to verify that any hyperlinks within the SaaS applications are safe for the user to access. So anytime a user is going to select a link, that link is going to be analyzed by the Access Control service to see whether we should A, deny access to the link, B, allow access to the link, or C, redirect that link to a secure browser session running in a different environment. Now that we understand the benefit from a user perspective, let's take a conceptual look at the architecture and see how everything fits together. Let's first start with being able to provide single sign-on to a SaaS application, but we have the enhanced security capability turned off. In our first example, the user is going to use a Workspace app that's been installed locally on our endpoint device. The user is going to authenticate to Workspace app, which gets sent up to Workspace and is validated against our primary identity provider. Once you've authenticated, you're going to see a list of your SaaS and web-based applications within your local Workspace app. When the user selects one of those applications, that request gets forwarded to Workspace and onto the Gateway service. The Gateway service, based on the endpoints capabilities and our enhanced security configuration, is going to reply to the launch request with a one-time use URL as well as the recommended browser. That recommended browser in this instance is going to be the local browser, which is going to initiate a connection to the Gateway service with that one-time use URL. The Gateway service requests an assertion from the single sign-on microservice. The local browser takes that, is redirected to the SaaS app logon page where that assertion is presented. The SaaS app then contacts the Gateway service to validate that assertion from the user and successfully authenticates the user. So what happens if I don't have Workspace app on my endpoint device? Well, I'm going to use a browser and access Workspace web. The overall user experience is going to be identical whether I'm using Workspace web within my local browser or I'm using Workspace app. I'm still going to be contacting the Workspace service running in Citrus Cloud. I'm still going to get a list of my SaaS and web-based applications, and it's still going to single sign me on to that SaaS application. Let's now change the scenario a little bit and enable enhanced security. The overall process to begin with is going to be the same. The user is going to launch Workspace app on their endpoint device, which will contact Workspace running in Citrus Cloud. You authenticate, and you get a list of your applications. When you select an application, that request goes to the Gateway service, and here's where things change just a little bit. The Gateway service will respond with our one-time use URL. It's also going to, again, respond with our preferred browser. Because enhanced security is enabled, and we're using Workspace app, our preferred browser is now the embedded browser. Workspace app's embedded browser now initiates a connection to the Gateway service. The Gateway service requests an assertion from the single sign-on microservice, as well as enhanced security policies from the access control service. Those enhanced policies are things like enabling the session-based watermarking, disable printing, disable navigation within the embedded browser. Regardless of those policies that we've enacted, the embedded browser is then redirected to the SaaS app logon page where that assertion is presented. The SaaS app then contacts the gateway service and validates the assertion and successfully authenticates the user. What about a scenario where enhanced security is enabled, but Workspace app is not installed in the endpoint device? In this instance, we're going to go ahead and use the local browser. Just like before, our local browser, using Workspace Web, will authenticate to our workspace and will get a list of applications. When the user selects an application, that request is sent to the Gateway service, and this time, the Gateway service responds back with a one-time use URL and the preferred browser. The preferred browser this time is going to be the secure browser service. 
Secure browser service, initiates a connection to the gateway service, requests an assertion from the single sign-on microservice, as well as the enhanced security policies from the access control service. The secure browser then gets redirected to the SAS app logon page where that assertion is presented, and then the, finally the SAS app contacts the gateway service to validate the assertion and authenticates the user. An additional thing that's included with enhanced security is analysis of any URL that a user might select within the SAS application. First, Access Control determines if the selected URL is associated with a Citrix cloud service. If so, access to that URL is allowed. Next, is that URL associated with a particular SaaS or web-based application? If it is, that URL is allowed. Then, is that URL, has, has it been specifically blocked by the administrator? If so, it's blocked. Has it been specifically redirected to secure browser? And then, has it been specifically allowed by the admin? We next look at overall categories. Have we specifically blocked, redirected, or allowed a category, like social media or job boards? If we go through this entire analysis and we still haven't had a hit on this particular URL, the URL is then allowed to be accessed. Now that we conceptually understand how all these pieces fit together, Let's walk through the admin experience to show how you would actually configure a SaaS application for single sign-on as well as enhanced security. With the use of predefined templates, it's actually very easy to configure single sign-on and enhanced security for SaaS applications. So in this example, when we select one of the applications, we just have to give it the name that a user is going to see within their workspace, and then we have to customize the URL. And this is going to be a URL that's specific to our organization when you access that SaaS application. The next step is enhanced security. Do we want enhanced security? And then what capabilities are we going to restrict within our SaaS application? Now this is the most complex part of the SAML configuration. We have to modify the assertion URL, which again is going to be equivalent to whatever our specified fully qualified domain name is for that SaaS application. And then we have to look at this metadata file and take that information and enter it into the actual SaaS application. Now we need the organization's admin for the SaaS application to go ahead and log on and configure SAML authentication. Different SaaS applications are going to be different. Some you'll be able to do yourself, while other SaaS apps will require you to contact the SaaS vendor to have the single sign-on configured for you. In this example, we're able to do this ourselves. So we go ahead and enable SAML. And now we have to enter in the issuer URL, which we can find within that metadata file that we opened from our access control configuration. We enter that in, and then we also have to get the certificate. And this is also in that big metadata file. So we copy that and go ahead and paste it into our SAML configuration and save the settings. Now the settings have been updated, SAML authentication, single sign-on, should now work. So we'll go ahead and finish the configuration of our SaaS application within the access control. The final part of configuring our SaaS application is to define the subscribers or the users who have access to this particular SaaS application. And this is all based on our Active Directory or Azure Active Directory environment. Our configuration for the specific SaaS app is now complete. But let's now look at how we handle URLs for the user's entire workspace. So in this case, we're gonna go ahead and modify the categories that we're blocking, allowing, and redirecting, as well as any specific URLs that we would like to block, redirect, or allow. And you can see with the categories, it's just a matter of selecting the different categories that are associated with with different areas that we want to make sure users don't have access to, and the same thing going with allow and redirect. Now, remember, when we look at how the URLs are analyzed, it's going to look at specific URLs first, and then it's going to go down to specific categories. So if I allow a URL and then deny a category, the URL is still allowed. As you saw, with access control, we configured single sign-on to a SaaS app, incorporate enhanced security policies, and provided web filtering capabilities for web links embedded within the SaaS app. And we did all of this in roughly three minutes time.